Now then, a bit of another project here. We've got this water drum and I want to fill it and keep it to a constant level with a pump. So as we draw water out of it, it will be replaced. So it means that we really want a float switch in here. Um, I have in the past tried to use a pressure switch out of a washing machine and it was all right for a while but because it's constantly got water on one side it seems like the water slowly works its way up the pipe and then starts um, making the diaphragm a bit sticky and filling up with water and all sorts of things. So we're going to try a different method. Previously I've had a big lump of um, polystyrene and a rod coming out the top and a float switch over here but that's very cumbersome so I want to do a different method and let's have an exploration of the ideas. So here we are in the workshop and this is a ball valve to shut the water off. Those people have never seen one, there's a, a block in here that moves that way against the nozzle and the water as the tank fills up lifts the ball up and I thought perhaps this will be useful. Now this particular ball valve came out the loft here of the workshop when we were making staircases we had central heating in here run off a big old wood burning sort of stove thing that I made and you could fill it up with shavings and it would have the radiators really quite warm within a quarter of an hour. It was a sort of gravity feed thing where you filled it in at the top. Anyway that's all redundant now and those who are interested we've got a wood burner in the corner because we just don't create as much dust and shavings so it's perfectly fine and the videos I make about making that particular stove are I think it's making a wood burning stove from bits found in the nettles part one and two if I remember I'll put a link in the description but for those who are interested it's mighty entertaining anyway let's just zoom down on this valve so what we have then, if we take those two parts out and we screw that back together, we have this arrangement which can go inside the tank and then a method of attaching it to the tank wall and I think we'll have to put that fibre washer back in there to take up the, uh, the slack, in fact we will, and then Let's just get a pencil. If we put something in there like that, then as the float goes up, it pushes that out. And it moves it about an inch, which is great. So that's a good start. So what we need to do is put that in there, pack that out a bit somehow, that's still a bit wobbly but we can work on that, I don't think it actually matters but probably be better to have that so it can't spin, so that's that, now the next part is this, now some of you will have seen these before when I was building the solar tracking gate and I think there's six parts to that and basically it is a long gate with a pivot one end and a drive mechanism the other end and it holds um, 10 solar panels so that's two and a half kilowatts worth of solar panels and it tracks the sun so again I'll try and remember to put a link into that but there's a playlist on that anyway this is a micro switch and it's adjustable for all sorts of ways 
I can't remember which way it's adjusted now. Ah, that's right. Go that way. And it switches either on or off, depending which set of contacts you um, used in here. And I think I've actually used these again on the solar tracking boom. And I think I did a recent video on repairing a bit of the wiring on that. But there you go. So anyway, this can be either that side or this side. And this shaft is splined, so you can adjust that. Um, and also, if we can see, this end, undo those four bolts and you can turn that round. So you can get that to fit in any of the four possibles. So it's very, very um, flexible in its use. And again, this came out of the scrapyard late 80s. I got a whole load of them. They may have come out of British Leyland at, um, at that time. Um, so they're brilliant and really robust. And interestingly enough, Magnus Mills wrote a book called Scheme for Full Employment, which is an analogy of British Leyland and the time, where the workers were all going on strike and the bosses didn't seem to be able to communicate and it was just a nightmare. So, uh, Scheme for Full Employment by Magnus Mills. It, it, it's not what you call exciting, but it just draws you along. Right, so I'm going to have a look at this. I think we'll set it up somewhere on the bench and see if we can get something working. The old header tank out the loft. And... Um, fitted the ball valve to it and we found some fibre washers to take up that play and this box came from Uncle Harold's workshop. Thank you very much Uncle Harold. One gross of fibre washers. And for those people who don't know what a gross is it was 144 things Anyway, so we've got this mounted in a tank. Let's just zoom in here. So what we want to do is we want this to operate that way. So we just need to probably like that would be the best way and if we use a bit of this that's the fitting in the copper pipe it will just push things out slightly now the mountains that side so maybe we need to turn this head round and see if it fits closer in we can make a bracket off here and come along so I'm sort of thinking that it will be neater if it's that way round. So, but down here. So, but the screws are still that side. But there again, if we break a plate across here and drill a hole, then we could put a stainless bolt through there and it'll make it all the more stronger. And then come off with a piece... To, for these mountings and those that piece can then have a slot in it which you can adjust it like that so hmm so it wants to be down there and that wants to be the other way around so yes whichever way you do it it seems to be a bit awkward I'll get my head round it but that's the plan unless it's that way That would work. It's a matter of getting these mountings in the right place. So let me just have an experiment. So as you can see there are four dowels there and a little centre pin. So if we put that on there 
hold it in there. So we've turned it round and then just tighten those up. As you can see this is bent because it was used with the uh, the tool for putting new teeth in the rack saw and some of the uh, the old teeth are quite worn but they'd obviously been roosting there for a number of years and they took a bit of grief to um, to get out anyway so I think if we remove this bit we can mount this here and then we can have a push rod in there push that which will push against that so if we put a flat plate there, the push rod can push against that. And of course, this is adjustable. So if we raise it up, then there's less movement because it's closer to the pivot. And this ball will have quite a lot of force. So I think that will work very well. Time for a bit of um, fabrication, I think. So I'm a little bit concerned because of the, um, let's just get a bit of something. Put that there. There's a reasonable amount of movement there. So it might be alright, but uh, it might not. And then I've got these. There's a roller there, and that's got, if it's quarter of an inch, it's quarter of an inch of movement. So that might be better. And it's got reasonably big contacts in it. So I think this might be better. It also might be easier to, uh, to mount can mount it on the end of the copper pipe somehow. So I might try this one first, purely because of that there's not as much movement. And it also seems a bit less pressure. And it's adjustable. You turn this bolt here and it adjusts the amount of pressure against that spring. So, I think we'll try this one. So, taking this micro switch that is adjustable, um, I've made this bit of brass as a mounting plate for that. And I've taken a plumbing union, as you can see. I've turned the end down in the lathe, so that then fits in there to locate that. So then the centre of that will be in the centre line of um, the push rod from the ball valve. And of course that will also be in the centre of that roller there. So let's solder that together and put it together and I think I'll have to get another one of these and turn it down um, to create a lock knot so it'll be adjustable on the thread of the ball valve and it'll be adjustable there so let's see how we get on so this is uh, Uncle Harold's brazing half I'm just going to put some flux on this. I've just cleaned that up with a, a wire brush. There we go. That doesn't have to be a tight fit. In fact, if we want the solder to run around it, we don't want it to be a tight fit.
Yep, that's gone all the way around. Okay, so there we are, and um, I've got several of these, so I've got a spare. I really wouldn't use something that is uh, just a one-off. Now then, how long does the push rod have to be? So, let's go for when it's about the right position. That is... 65 mil or about two and a half inches and this is and it's going to thread on there so we're going to take quarter of an inch off and that is twenty five mil or about an inch sixty five and twenty five ninety minus about a quarter of an inch, 80, so the push rod needs to be about 80 mil, and that will then thread on there. So let's um, make up a push rod of some form. Okay, I've got a push rod, and it is 83 mil long. And the sort of ground the ends up. So let's just see what happens. I can also, if it's outside adjustment, then this is an experiment and I can adjust it. Ha! I'd say that was about. not bad I'm quite pleased with that I think what we need to do now is just set up some wires just to prove that it works so I've just got the normally closed contacts wired up now and we've got this 12 volt battery that goes through the micro switch through the 12 volt bulb and back to the battery so I'll just lift the float switch so there we go, the tank is full of water. Start using water, the ball cock goes down, the pump comes on. The pump's filling the tank up, it comes up, the level comes up, and the pump goes off. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. Success, whoopee.